So it's useful to think about traditional sampling before we think about spatial sampling. In spatial sampling, we're worrying about space. And very, very frequently, that's what's important. Um, you cannot get a good representation of your population without thinking about where the population is located. But that's not always true. Um, and it's useful to think about traditional sampling methods, statistical methods, before we then think about spatial sampling methods. So you're devising your sampling method so that you can figure out how to truly represent your population, right? So you're trying to find out something about the population by collecting information about only part of that population. Um, you want to know what the population structure is. And so structure might be age structure, who's young, who's old. It might be um, building structures, you know, what's a high rise, what's a bungalow. Uh, you might want to know about the distribution. Is it random? Is it clustered? Um, is it evenly, uniformly distributed everywhere? That type of thing. You might want to know detailed things about, for example, the range of ages or the depth of a canyon or the elevation, the height of a tree, right? So these could apply to one thing or they could apply to all kinds of things. Um, but it depends on what it is that you're sampling. So two different methods, a non-probability method and a probability method, right? So start up with the non-probability method. If you really truly don't know much about this population, this is how you're going to start. It's pretty simple. It's less expensive you're not likely to get it wrong. So unlikely to be representative means that you're unlikely to, because you, you don't know anything about it, you can't really get it wrong, but you might get it wrong. You know, you, it might not show you really truly what you need to know, but, but you don't know anything yet. So it's kind of hard to go wrong. Um, so this is probably where you would start. And you would do convenient sampling, meaning you know, you'd sample every single item that you came to without worrying about whether it fit into a particular uh, distribution or structure. So let's say you know that there must be some age structure to this community, but you don't know what the age structure is. So you just talk to every single first person that you come to. And of course, it might not be age, it might be race, or it might be ethnicity, uh, it might be height, it might be hair color, right? People it could be any of those things. Um, convenience sampling for trees or for um, other plants. Um, you're going to measure the first one you come to, right? Uh, you're going to walk around the forest instead of maybe walking through the forest. Or you'll work through the forest just one time instead of deciding on, on transect. Um, I knew a guy once who um, sampled, he, he did a, a PhD study on ground squirrels. And he sampled every single one he could catch because they're hard to catch. And he tried not to catch the same ones over and over again, uh, but he was measuring them by weight and by length and, you know, health and that side type of thing. But, um, you know, it's convenient sampling because they were too hard to catch otherwise, right? You, you couldn't say, no, I'll not get that one. I'll get this other one. Judgmental sampling, right? So you make a judgment. You decide, well... I don't want all the tallest trees. I don't want all the, the biggest trees with their diameter. Um, I want the in-between ones, or I want the young ones. Um, judgment sampling for houses. You might get the ones that are look oldest, or the ones that have the best paint job. Um, you're not necessarily getting everything, but you're making some kind of judgment towards what you think you're interested in. And so... It may not really be representative, but it's going to get you some data that could be useful. Quota sampling. I have to have five older people and five middle-aged people and five young people and five children, right? That would be quota sampling. And obviously, you could uh, extrapolate that to race and ethnicity. You could extrapolate it to trees. I've got to get 10 broadleaf evergreens and 10 needleleaf uh, sorry, broadleaf evergreens, 10 needleleaf evergreens, and maybe 10 deciduous broadleaf trees, right? So you have a quota. You, you're going to get a certain number of each type. There's nothing magic about it, and it may not be representative, but it'll tell you something about the population. So second up, probability-based, right? You do know something about the population, and so you're trying to apply your knowledge 
to the sampling method. And so you ensure the sample that samples are representative and independent from one another. You're trying to remove likelihood of bias. And so if you're sampling people, you might try and speak to every tenth person who walks past you. Or you might uh, sample absolutely everybody until you get the same answers over and over again. Or you might say, no, I'm going to collect 10 people from this age group or 10 people from this race. Um, if you know that the population has a 50% black and a 50% white, for example, um, racial breakout, then you might get, you know, 10 black and 10 white people. If you knew that 1% was, um, what is the smallest group, Asian and Pacific Islanders, then you want to try and speak to one person who is like that. The problem, of course, is how you designate that person and how that person sees themselves, right? It's rife with all kinds of difficulty. Um, people are difficult. Uh, so if we go back to squirrels, uh, or if we go back to trees, or if we go back to houses, right? How do you ensure that they're representative? It's so much easier if you're dealing with space. Um, but you might get, uh, you might look at the um, house age and, and the house style, and maybe um, you'd have some other extra information uh, so as to use that house that you gain from the um, city website or something like this, right? You know, something that you are, you know is a, a, a source of information before you go out and look at the house itself. But again, the idea is that you remove the likelihood of bias. Ideally, you know the probability of selecting each observation, right? So based on the sampling frame that you came up with, you know that you're likely to see uh, more tall trees or more deciduous trees, whatever kind of tree it is. Um, so simple random sampling is where you might lay a grid over your, well, no, that's spatial, haha. -ha. Simple random sampling in a traditional sense is literally that you would catch every fifth person or you go to a spot and you draw a random number and you sample the random number, right? It's easier for me to think about space examples. Stratified sampling is where you have broken up your population, whatever the population is, uh, by category and you know that you've got 60% of one category and 40% of the other category, or maybe 60, 20, 20, and then you're going to collect 60, sorry, you're going to collect a proportional amount, you know, 60% of your sample should come from the 60 category and 20% and 20%, right? So you're breaking it out according to um, whatever the method is. Systematic sampling is where you are doing a transect or doing a, um, a quadrat throw, right? So you've got a method and you're following the method systematically. And I always think that that one is least likely to be biased um, because you have a, a, a set method, a set way of doing this. So again, I'm going to stop there and we're going to come back to this.